Hey guys, I wanted to give you an update on my community pollinator garden. So I planted this last, let's see, fall, right after it stopped raining a lot. So I know it was after the fall, um, summer season and things did well. I mean, there was, I mean, it's going to be an ever changing thing, but um, I planted lots of seeds and then a few perennial plants and we got started. Well, then I planted these bachelor button seeds and alyssum in the uh, winter and they bloomed this spring and they're still blooming now. I don't know if you can see it, but there's pollinators everywhere. Um, and it's been an absolute bee magnet and butterfly magnet. Um, I'll put a picture of what this looked like when they were in their prime because it's doesn't do it justice now but I have sunflowers coming up um, Coreopsis the blanket flowers the alyssum and salvia all mixed in here um, there's more Coreopsis and the alyssum the blanket flowers on this side were pretty thin I don't know what it is I might come in with some good um, soil on this side just to counteract whatever is happening over there I think it might be bunnies though so if it's bunnies then nothing I can do about that um, so like I wanted to reiterate I planted this um, I had my HOA give me approval for this to be a community pollinator garden this was just a juniper enclosed ring of nothing and I thought it would be really beneficial to um, beautify the community as well as help out our our pollinators um, and other wildlife too because um, birds are out here and little like I said bunnies and whatnot um, and they agreed to it and so mainly this is a donated uh, thing they're not giving any money out of our HOA dues for this so most of this time and money have come from myself. There have been a couple people to donate like $40 here and then some seeds. And then I have a lovely neighbor who donated her time and planted some zinnia seeds. So I would love for it to be a group effort, but I'm glad that I'm getting the plants established now. So people can see really what uh, Florida native and Florida friendly plants can do um, in our landscape. They're great for pollinators and they don't waste a lot of water. And that's the thing here. I'm not watering now. I was at first. Now things are getting more established. It's going to start raining more. So I'm not going to keep watering um, this area, which is great because I don't have to spend my own money watering a community <laughs> garden. Um, so I have lots of milkweed growing. This milkweed was actually eaten down to the nubs and it's come back. So we're waiting on some more monarchs to come back. This is actually a native, uh, or native, it is native, but it's a medicinal um, wild lettuce um, that can actually be used as a painkiller if you do your own research. So just keep that in mind. I have porterweed, this is the native porterweed. Corky stem passion flower vine and then blanket flower of course the blanket flower out here doesn't bother me like it did in my landscape like I said it's not considered native anymore but it has such a benefit to the pollinators I'm going to leave it especially since in this application I'm not having to plant all these um, blanket flowers they're coming up on their own <laughs> Um, we have a sour orange tree that came actually from my yard. We are using this as a host plant for the swallowtail butterflies. Over here, um, I have some baby milkweeds that just came back up. There's a milkweed, starry rosin weed, which is a native, a um, blue salvia. What you'll see is a bee attractor. Um, there's some goldenrod back there. And then, um, let's see. Oh, I have yarrow in here. Some more Florida green eyes is coming back. I hope it does. 
at first I was really like concerned about all the weeds in here but I'm not anymore it is what it is um this is all liatris it has definitely spread um along with these tiny um uh, milkweed this is butterfly weed it's very pretty nader native native um milkweed to florida always plant native milkweeds for your monarchs so these liatris will be um, blooming bright purple and like a lavender um, in the fall there were baby liatris and there still are so we're hoping those grow more when um, they, they're self-seeded when it starts raining because that would be lovely um, let's see this is oh look some of my neighbor's zinnias they started to grow so thank you Jen for your contribution um, it gets really really dry out here so it's really important to pick the right plants because it could very easily fail out here if you don't because like I said watering is such a big thing so this area actually has the best place for cone flowers in anywhere that I've planted so they really like being at the bottom of a pine tree so it started out with one plant last year it's blooming now it has about four three or four blooms on this plant there's one there's at least one or two on that one there's a plant here let me see there's one here there's one there this has got three blooms on it that's gonna bloom so it really is taking over and it's spreading like i would wish it would spread in my own yard but luckily i can see it from my house <laughs> So I'm really, really excited about that. Purple coneflower is one of my favorites. I had some dill out here. Um, and the other uh, host plant for swallowtail butterflies, dill. Um, there's a couple different swallowtail butterflies, but one of them uses dill. Cone or er, blanket flower. And then I have the spotted dotted horse mint or bee balm coming back up. This will grow nice and tall and support the big pollinators. I have some zinnias coming up in here. I think I sowed those. I'll just pull a couple weeds while I'm here. And then more um, blanket flower and a couple goldenrod. Those goldenrods are ones I took out from my own uh, yard. So another thing about this, I have a few logs laying in here. I have some rocks. I was piling the debris from like pulling weeds and stuff over there and as you can see there's nothing there. It really does just decompose and go away. But not only that, uh, when you leave those areas like um, like leaf litter, I've been collecting like leaves from around the edges of the, the side of the sidewalk and I've been piling them here because once this starts raining once it starts raining and decomposing i'll be able to use this leaf mulch um, as a nice soil additive to these beds and it'll be free because i like i said it's a, a community volunteer donated type thing so anything i can do to save money and collecting leaves and turning them into soil is like a huge thing of that I do so I'm gonna do it here because the leaves were there and I might as well let them decompose in here so yeah so that is a look at this community garden I know it's not perfect but it is serving its purpose there's pollinators in here all the time there's birds in here all the time um, all sorts butterflies bees wasps um, little flies all sizes of things and yeah I can't wait to see how it evolves and to see if my neighbors get more involved because like I said I love to teach about Florida native and Florida friendly plants and I think this is 
a great way to do that. So as always, thank you for watching. Bye.